rooms are smelly. Well, it's not so, it's not as smelly as it used to be. <laughs> we used to go through two or three vans on a tour. Uh, with Gigi, good lord. We'd have to, we'd have to, after, you know, somebody would flatten the tires or smash the windows or whatever, we'd turn it in and be like, oh, great. It smells so good again. <laughs> I was wondering uh, what you think about New England. New England? New England. I love New England. It's the fucking East Coast that I hate. I mean, New England, when I think of New England, I think of, like, New Hampshire and Vermont and Maine, I guess. I don't think of Massachusetts and Connecticut and New York and New Jersey, all those friggin' infested shitholes of fucking sewer slime. I hate it all, man. I can't wait to get back to California. This is just a fucking rat. I fucking hate this shit, man. I can't fucking believe I'm in Connecticut. Well, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, it's all just one big shithole. There's nothing going on here, so, you know, I mean, that's the only reason I lived here for as long as I did back in, you know, in the 90s and stuff, but now it's just dead. It's dead everywhere. What do you what do you think about the idea of like danger being in music or in art? Like, do you think that's a necessary part of it? There's something that makes you like excited about art. I mean, it makes me excited. You know, danger in music and art. I mean, that's you know, for me, that's the exciting. You know, I mean, it still has to be good. You know, but and I'm not saying that you know there aren't good. There isn't good art and good music that's not dangerous. But it, for me, it's more. I mean, I love the the whole thrill of not really knowing what to expect and, and you know for our, our shows and for what we do it's like every night is different you know a lot of bands go on stage and they play the same show and they have the same little moves and they choreograph this and that our shit is like you know last night some asshole sucker punched our singer and he fucking our singer fucking took him down and bit him in the face you know yeah. it's mm -hmm. like shit like that happens you know and then the next show will just be a crazy show where there won't be any kind of confrontation but then then you know a couple nights later you know it could be uh, I mean it's just anything can happen with, with our shows and especially back in the day with Gigi it was like I mean it was like being on stage with, with stage with Gigi back in those days was like a war zone yeah. it's like you had to watch every fucking side of you and in front of you and in back of you and you know there would be bottles flying at you and people you know I mean it was that was pretty it was scary at times, I, you know, but it was still exciting, you know, it was like, it just, there was so much like adrenaline, you know, it was like so many emotions going on in the club, it was like fear and anger and hatred and love and, you know, they, everybody loved us while we were playing and by the time the show was over, they were, you know, fucking chasing us out of town, <laughs> literally, yeah. Yeah. you know. Have you heard the song by the Drive-By Truckers about you guys playing in uh, Memphis? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't remember the whole uh, gist of the song, but mm -hmm. I remember that uh, we were running out of the club and we were like trying to get away before the cops showed up, and we were, you know, we were peddling merch out of the back of the van and shit, <laughs> you know, and everybody's like, "Hurry up! They called the fucking cops! The cops are on their ways!" You know, so we closed up the fucking shop and. Got in the van and drove off before the yeah, before the cops actually uh, got us that time. People yeah. still talk about certain there's certain shows that Gigi did back in the day that people. It's just you know. What what's one of your like most surreal kind of memories from, not even necessarily performing but just kind of like living uh, hard in those times, or were you like even. Living, I living yeah. hard. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't living that hard. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, I was. Uh, I didn't have any money or anything, but I wasn't living hard. Gigi mm -hmm. was the one that was living hard. Yeah. We were like, you know, we had places to live and uh, stuff like that. But Gigi was like basically. I mean, he was basically homeless. You know, he had whatever you know he had in the bag or a backpack or whatever. I don't think he ever owned a backpack, but you know, like a little suitcase or something. And if he started accumulating too much shit, you know, he would even, uh, there's footage of him like burning his stuff on stage, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, I got too much shit now, I'm just going to fucking set it on fire and start over, you know. Uh, but yeah, he was basically, he would come to New York and stay with me, we'd go to 
Chicago and stay with our friend Sharon. He basically would go to you know North Carolina and stay with Jeff from Anti Scene. He was kind of just roamed around and stayed with people and uh, mm-hmm. you know shit like that. But, good lord, and, uh, you know people always ask me that like you know what was this that and the other. So like, there's just so many crazy stories. You know. Do you think that uh, Hated shows that whole scene pretty well? Um, Hated was cool for the time period that it was, for sure. Uh, I think Todd did a pretty good job, mm-hmm. you know, of that. Uh, but yeah, it was it was like the craziest time of my life, that's for sure. You know? When uh, when you're growing up, what kind of music did you like? Like what? Growing up? Yeah, like I mean, when you're in your teens, basically, like what actually got you into music, or when did you get into music? I guess. Yeah, I mean, we got you know when you know when my mom and dad. Divorced, you know, when we were living in the log cabin there mm-hmm. up in Northumberland, New Hampshire, we were kind of isolated from everything. And uh, I guess I was like 10 years old when when my, you know, my mom finally broke away from my asshole father, and moved us, you know, into the next town. And then we were kind of like liberated. We had a little freedom, and then we started. Uh, my mom was friends with this woman who had a teenage daughter. You know, we were like 10 years old. Mm. And, and the teenage daughter was like, you know, 15 or something like that. And she had like all these like Herman's Hermits and Dave Clark Five and the Beatles and shit like that. You know, mm. and we'd already seen the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show. Wow. <laughs> but uh, so we were listening to stuff like that. And then the monkeys, you know, I mean, we loved the fucking monkeys and the Beatles cartoons and shit mm. like that. And, uh, you know, basically all that English invasion stuff and things like that. And then, uh, you know, we get into early, like, Alice Cooper and, you know, Mata Hoople and early Queen and shit like that. And Aerosmith we loved. We fucking, you know, we, we were seeing Aerosmith when they were opening for bands in New Hampshire, you know, in, in like, 73 or 4, you know, before they... When Dream On was just breaking as a fucking hit. And, uh, and then I guess once we heard the Ramones, it was like, that was basically the beginning of the end for us. And then, you know, it just went from that to, you know, we'd already heard like the MC5 and the Stooges and stuff. And we were, we were playing, you know, in our first bands. The first band we were in together was Little Sister's Day. And, uh, you know, and then the next uh, year we started a band called Malpractice so and it was basically cover music you know but we were covering like The Damned and we were covering covering the Ramones and this was like 1977 so these bands were just coming out but we were covering their songs because nobody in New Hampshire even owned a fucking Ramones album you know I'm sure I mean, we were probably the first kids to own the fucking Sex Pistols record, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's, and we would, like, get Rock Scene magazine and, and all that shit. So we knew all about the Dead Boys and the Dolls, you know, the Dolls and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, that that's the kind of stuff that, I mean, we're still influenced by that shit. But as far as, uh, when our music, our music to me is, like, kind of like a cross between the Ramones and, you know, the Dictators and the uh, Dead Boys and stuff like that. Just more aggressive, you know. But we're like more of like just a rock and roll band, you know. It's like I don't, uh, you know, it's like there's not many bands really that sound like us anymore. Most of the bands we play with are metal bands or hardcore bands. You can't even distinguish one from the other. Most of them suck. I mean, you know, really, there's no like everybody's in a band now. It's like cool to be in a fucking band, you know. And back when we were playing music, it was like that was our life. You know, that's what we did 24-7, you know. It just seems like kids today just want to say they're in a fucking band. And everybody wants to sound like the band that's popular at the time. It's like back in those, in the, you know, in our day, we just played what we liked to play. And everybody had their own style. Now there's no style in music anymore, you know. It's kind of just, it's kind of all the same. We're like, you know, we, we laugh every night because we're like the slowest band on, in, you know, in the... Uh, every show we do, we're like the slowest band in age, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I really don't listen to too much of anything other than what I've been listening to for the last 30 years, yeah. you know. <laughs> I still, you know, I've got the Ramones and the Dead Boys and Johnny Thunders and shit like that in my CD bag and shit. You know, like, 
I, you know, nowadays I don't really care about any band. The only band I care about is the one that's in this band. You know? I mean, occasionally we see a good band, but it's really... Right. What about uh, horror movies? Because you have such a it, it, like an obsession with horror, right? Oh yeah. What uh, What are some of the What are some of your favorites for horror? I mean, my favorite, you know, of course, is Chainsaw Massacre, and we were, you know, lucky enough to me and my girl were lucky enough to spend well some time with Gunner. He's like actually a friend of ours, so. That's, I mean, that's always been my favorite movie. It's got nothing to do with that, you know. It's like I've been going... I, I started going to horror conventions in, like, 1990 when they had the first chiller. And, uh, and back then, it was great. It was really cool. It was like, you know, all these, these individual people. And, you know, it was kind of like a family. And everybody had, you know, something different. And, and it was fun and it was cool. And now it's turned into a fucking the same fucking guests and everybody's charging forty dollars for a fucking photo and thirty dollars to fucking sign it and, you know and everybody's got you know I talk to people that have booths and you know, I mean I haven't been to a convention in years because they're basically just all about you know everybody's selling the same shit so they can make money back in you know back in 1990 it was like the first one I think Elsa was there and uh, Herschel Gordon Lewis and people like that and, you know, when was the last time Ilsa did a fucking convention? You know? It's like, you know, Sid Haig and Bill Mosley and I mean that's which is great, don't get me wrong, I, you know, but I've seen it like a million times and it's basically the same convention just moving from one place to the other, you know. I mean I'm not saying it's bad, but you know, I I just haven't been to a show in a while. Have you seen any horror movies recently that you liked? I don't watch I can't watch a movie anymore. I, my attention span is like Ten minutes, you know. I can I can watch like uh, I've got three things going. At the, you know, I got the Andy Griffith show on for one second, and then I flip to you know the true crime show and some serial killer show or whatever. You know, I watch a lot of stuff about murder, and death, and just you know, killing, <laughs> rape, and torture and shit like that. I I don't wa I guess I guess I've graduated from horror movies to like real fucking you know death and I'd rather watch the news and see a bunch of people get fucking blown away and that's more fucking interesting to me. You know? <laughs> I mean, do you read a lot of true crime stuff? True. I used to. I mean, I don't even do that much anymore. You know, too busy on fucking Facebook, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, too busy ranting on fucking Facebook about all the assholes in the world. <laughs>